Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. Now joining us is our guest, Hamid Debashi. We're picking up our conversation where we left it off. Hamid is a professor of Iranian studies and comparative literature at Columbia University. Thanks for being with us, Hamid. Anytime, yes. So Hamid, my first question is really to discuss Syria. Why is Syria of strategic importance to Iran? Uh, over the last uh, 30 years, since the inception of the uh, Islamic Republic, in fact, more accurately, since 1982, Israeli invasion of, uh, of Lebanon, a strategic alliance developed between Iran, uh, Syria, Hezbollah, and Hamas. That, and they call this line of uh, uh, connection, Moravana, resistance. So Iran, Syria, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and Hamas in Palestine. They formed a line of resistance vis-a-vis Israel and its support by uh, United States. This was the scenario that was operative and working to whatever degree and limited uh, imagination that this kind of uh, uh, war of attrition could possibly sustain until the rise of the Arab revolutions in 2011. That began to change the scenario radically. And if you go back and look, immediately Hamas realized that its interest, the interest of the Palestinians and the interest of Hamas is actually in connection with these revolutionary uprisings. And they began to side with the revolution. They began to support the Egyptian revolutions and they decoupled themselves from Syria. This was a very important move. Hezbollah, on the, uh, on the other hand, denounced uh, uh, the revolutionary uprising, I mean, the social movement in Iran, the green movement, Hassan Nasrallah dismissed it as inspired by uh, United States. And then when the trouble began in Syria, uh, Hassan Nasrallah and Hezbollah refused to dissociate themselves with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad. And as a result, the credibility that uh, uh, Hassan Nasrallah and Hezbollah had created for itself since the war of 2006, that it had, they have become the hero of the Arab world, they categorically lost it. They have now have fighters inside the Syria. They have been projected and they are, in fact, as a force against the Syrian uh, interest. So because of the Arab Revolution, that alliance began to crumble by first Hamas decoupling from it and Hezbollah using uh, credibility. So all remained was Iran and, and Syria. Iran has invested heavily, strategically, militarily, intelligence-wise, in every possible ways, uh, in, in keeping uh, Bashar al-Assad in power, not, as I said earlier, because they, are, they have a love affair with Bashar al-Assad, but they just want to make sure that their interests in the region, and particularly in Syria, are, are, are uh, kept uh, intact. And as a result, what we are witnessing today, namely the scenario that China, because of its economic interest, Russia, because of its economic and uh, strategic interest, and Iran, for similar reasons, are siding with Bashar al-Assad, whereas U.S., uh, Israel, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, and others uh, are uh, on, uh, against that uh, coalition. However, that coalition is uh, on both sides are very fragile. Why? Because the will of the Syrian people, who are the majority of nonviolent people who began the revolution, uh, the re peaceful revolution two and a half years ago, are very much the people who are ultimately will decide the future of Syria. So all these machinations that are happening at the state level in terms of the geopolitics of the region are only successful to the point that they finally come to a, a strategic resolution. But when they, they come down from their horses and Humvees to rule, they will see that the Syrians are not going to be the same Syrians who have been brutalized by the uh, uh, Assad dynasty for uh, half a century. So, Hamid, I want to go back to the point that you made about how Iran invested heavily in keeping Assad in power. But now we're sort of seeing the weakening of his regime in the Geneva Two Talks, Kerry's public statements that he's made. Um, I want to get your impression. Do you think that at the end of the day, Iran is going to throw uh, Assad under the bus? Oh, absolutely. Iran, as I said, has no personal commitment to uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad. Iran simply wants to make sure that it is a player in the region. As you re remember, UN initially invited Iran to join the negotiations in Geneva too, but then they disinvited them. The fact is that without Iran, there cannot be, Lakhtar uh, 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 Ibrahimi has repeatedly said that without Iran, there cannot be a resolution to the Syrian uh, crisis. And Iran knows that fact because Iran is on the ground, the military intelligence apparatus of Islamic republics inside Syria, and they want to use that as a leverage not to keep 
Bashar al-Assad in power, but to make sure that the regional interests are protected in the aftermath of uh, Bashar al-Assad. The same scenario is actually applicable to the Russians. Russians were cheated out of the post Gaddafi scenario in Libya, and they don't want to happen, uh, see it happen in Syria as well. Because of these uh, revolutions, Jessica, these uprisings, the uh, counter-revolutionary forces that range from China and, and Russia and comes down to Iran and Syria and Israel and Qatar and all of these forces, they have mobilized to, keep, to see how they can stabilize. The term for them is stabilize the situation. So historically, we have to keep our eyes on the ball. What is the ball? Masses of millions of people have arisen against tyranny and against abuse and for their civil liberties and for their ability to unionize, to have their uh, women's rights and, and similar uh, uh, civil liberties. And against this, we have a constellation of counter-revolutionary forces that on the surface, they may appear to be at odds. Saudi Arabia may seem to be at odds with the Islamic Republic, but ultimately they have one goal, to quell these revolutionary uprisings for their own interest. All right, Hamid Debashi, it's always a fascinating history lesson with you. Thank you. Absolutely, my pleasure, anytime. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.